Welcome class and today we're going to uh, just focus on a common horizontally launched projectile, projectile uh, problem. Uh, in this problem a clown is fired from a cannon horizontally at 50 meters per second. Uh, precarious job but uh, a clown's got to make a living I guess and let's say the clown is just practicing for a big performance waiting to hit. Uh, the cannon was placed at the edge of an 80 meter high cliff. Uh, so we have marked in the 80 meter high cliff, um, we're talking uh, delta dy just at this point here and it's 80 meters from the bottom and lands on a soft mattress. So the questions are how long does it take the clown to hit the ground below and how far from the base of the cliff was the mattress? So how long is uh, delta t and how far from the base of the cliff uh, was the mattress? Uh, well, what we're looking at there is delta delta dx. So it's sometimes called uh, the range. So how far from the base of the cliff, sometimes called in these problems, the range. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just talk uh, briefly about some common projectile motion concepts that we need to know before we go into more complicated problems. Uh, firstly, the only force in projectile motion uh, that's causing acceleration is the force due to gravity and that is generally uh, directed in, inwards towards uh, the center of the earth. Uh, the x direction and the y direction are independent. Uh, that is to say they're treated separately, the same as any uh, two-dimensional problem we've done to date. Uh, in the x direction, there is uniform velocity. Because there is no acceleration, uh, which would change the type of motion, change the velocity, uh, that velocity is seen as uniform. Now, in the projectile, um, motion diagram that we have on the left here, we can see that these arrows, these red arrows in the horizontal, they are all representing the same velocity. So they would have the same magnitude. So throughout the duration of the clown's uh, flight, uh, that, uh, that velocity vector will remain constant. Now in the y direction, what you'll notice is that the clown starts with a very, with a tiny velocity in the y direction and that progressively gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, it should also be mentioned at this stage actually that th the um, velocity itself you can get just by uh, looking at uh, the instantaneous velocity Velocity is got by getting uh, drawing a tangent um, to, the, to the trajectory. Um, so yeah, back to the y direction, uh, that vector is actually increasing and that's because of the acceleration due to gravity which is causing the velocity to increase. The final thing is that the x and y direction are independent um, but they are joined in unholy matrimony um, by delta t. So delta t is a common link between the x and y components. Okay, so we're going to look at this in a little bit more detail. Uh, to answer these questions, uh, it's very common that you would look at the vertical direction uh, firstly. Not always, sometimes you will start at the horizontal and then go to the vertical. Uh, so it just depends on what you're given and what you require. Uh, however, very often uh, the link between them is finding delta t. So you would use what you're given to find delta t and then move from one direction to the other. So for the vertical direction, we must use the big five. Why must we use the big five? Well, because we um, do have acceleration, we know that. So we have uniform acceleration, so we should really be using the kinematics equations. So I'm just using the GRASP method, the G-R-A-S-P. Um, we write out our givens. Now, a very, very important, two very important parts here. Uh, delta dy is going to have an is going to be negative 80. Uh, remember that when we did our convention uh, previously in the course, we looked at designating a positive and negative, and we said that convention for us usually was negative is downwards, positive is upwards. Uh, the acceleration uh, therefore would also be a negative, and it's our standard value. Um, the other key point here is the third given that we're that given that we have is the velocity initial velocity in the y direction now this poor unfortunate uh, clown was shot exactly it was shot horizontally so for a horizontally launched projectile uh, vi uh, is zero because it was the initial velocity was all in the x direction 
The required value is delta t, and we can use one of the big five equations um, to get our uh, t value. Uh, the easiest one to use is delta dy. Uh, delta dy is equal to viyt plus a half at squared. Viyt uh, changes to zero because viy is zero. And when we solve all that, we get this figure for t is equal to 4.038 seconds. So remember, this is the actual time uh, for the clown to reach uh, the bottom, for the clown to have um, fallen through the sky under the force of gravity and fallen through the sky 80 meters. Okay, the second question is, how far from the base of the cliff was the mattress? Okay, so what we're looking for here is this range value, what we talked about in terms of range. Uh, so if we want to get the range value, um, we are thinking horizontal because we're trying to get the delta dx. Now, if you're using the horizontal, remember that in the x direction there's uniform velocity. So there is no acceleration, so we do not use the big five. Uh, rather, we use uh, the v is equal, vx is equal to delta dx over the delta t, very simple equation. Um, because Vx is not changing. So rearranging that, we get uh, delta dx is equal to Vx delta t, and we can just simply put in our numbers there, and we get approximately um, a value of approximately 200, 200 meters. Now, I'm not going to worry about significant digits, but know that when you're doing this, on a, a test or an exam, you should really be using the correct amount of di significant digits. That is the least amount that you were given uh, to begin with in the practice problem. Okay, so uh, now that we've worked through a practice problem, I just want to give you a conceptual problem. So we start with a conceptual problem that tells us that a yellow tennis ball, right here, the yellow tennis ball, is fired horizontally out of a machine while a pink tennis ball is dropped vertically from the same height. Which ball hits the ground first and why? Okay, so we, just analyzing this, um, it is very, very tempting uh, to suggest that the yellow tennis ball will hit the ground first. Um, so let's just uh, attack this and look at it from a physics and mathematical standpoint. So we're going to try and get delta t um, by looking at the vertical components for both of them. So if we look at the yellow tennis ball, we can see that um, we've got a viy value and it was fired horizontally. So that's going to be equal to zero meters per second. The acceleration is negative 9.1 meters per second squared. And delta dy is the drop height. Let's say that was 100 meters. Okay, now if we look at the pink tennis ball, we'll see that delta dy was also zero meters per second because it was simply dropped. The acceleration is also 9.81 and the drop height was the same. So that's 100 meters. So in actual fact, you can see those three variables are gonna lead you to the same value for t. So the actual time in the air is going to be the exact same value. Now, of course you would say, but they don't look the same. And yeah, the way that they differ in this case is through their range value. And that's because they don't have the same horizontal component. Okay, so that was just one video on horizontally launched projectiles. Um, the next video that we're going to go through, uh, we'll talk about a different type of projectile, which is one launched at an angle with respect to the ground.